I was really happy to hear that song right there. I was happy to hear the one before that. I hope the choir's got a little, no, a little bit of breath left in them so I can sing my song. He's an old time guy. He may not come when you want, but he'll be there right on time. Like How many people song. know that? Hey. I like this song. Well, he's an old time guy. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, he's an old time guy. Oh, yes, he is.
for allowing me to come here, Pastor Mark Tony. When I was a little small kid, I used to live with my brother next door. Now that, that house ain't there no more, they done tore it down. But I used to live over there. Many mornings, I would come over here. Now instead of going to school, I would slip up in here. See, he was asleep, he always be sleeping. I would, I would get his keys, man. And I would come over here, man, and I would stand right here. Act like I was a preacher. Now, I was just a little kid. Like, man, I wish, one day, man, I wish I could preach right here. Now, I'm preaching for But I, I, I mean, you know, but this, this is, it feels real good to be right here. Amen? Amen. Now, the title of the message this morning will be A New Lease on Life. And that's the title of the message. We'll be coming from Luke chapter 18. A new lease on life is what we're going to be talking about. Luke chapter 18. If you would turn there. I'm going to start about verse 35. All right now, all right. Right at about verse 35. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. Here's what it said. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked, What it mean? What, what, what's going on here? That everybody stirred up all the people are getting loud and roused up. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth yes. passes by. Wow. He's coming through. Yes. And he cries saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Yes. And they which went before him, or went before, rebuked him. They told him to shut up. <laughs> that he should hold his peace. But he cries so much the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Sometimes we need to cry so much the more. Amen. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. See, when it's, it's a, you know, one thing when Jesus commands you to come to him. Now that's something. Now that's something. And a lot of times Jesus is commanding us to come to him. But we don't, we, we just sit around. But it said, and when he was come near, he asked him, verse 41, saying, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Jesus said unto him, receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. Watch it, now watch it. And immediately, somebody say immediately. He received his sight. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time for this guy. Amen. And following him, glorifying God. So he went on and followed him and glorified God. And all the people, when they saw him, gave praise unto God. They didn't give praise to him, but they gave praise to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless this bread that we're about to receive in the nourishment of our spiritual and our natural body. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 A new lease on life. And this man was a blind man. He didn't have no sight. A lot of people today, even in the church, they have no sight. They can't see spiritually out of their a way of a paper bag, sort of thing. Amen. We need the light of Jesus Christ so that we can have a new lease on life. Now I'm going to give you the definition of a lease. Let's first look at the definition of the word lease. A lease. Let's just check it out real quick. It's a legal document outlining the terms under which one party agrees to, uh, who would you use a rental property, to rent property from another party. That's right. A lease guarantees the leasee, or the renter, use of an asset and guarantees the leasor, the property owner, regular payments from the leasee for a specified number of months or years. 
Both the leasee and the leasor must uphold the terms of the contract for the lease to remain valid. All right now. You hear that? Yeah. All right now. A new lease. A new lease. For a home or a car. You better watch out now. Sure feels good to sign new lease, don't it? Yeah. When you get one, sure do feel good to sign it. There's also a new lease on life definition, which says a substantially improved chance to lead a happy or successful life. A substantially improved chance to lead a happy or successful life. I signed a new lease on life when I was born again. I'm so happy to have a new lease on life. I started out wrong in my early years. You see, I did a whole lot of wrong and things like that. But God gave me a new chance. You know, yeah, he gave me a new chance. But you know what? There's a price with success. You see, there's a price to success. If you're going to be successful, you need to know that the moment you begin to do better, people have a problem with that. People don't have a problem with that. They don't like that. So I, I don't be trying to make people laugh and things like that. You know, and I preached some guy, he came and told me, uh, you know, uh, you, what you do, man, you know, you preach, man, you, you, you running a show or something, a comedy show. I said, I ain't running a comedy show, no way. Mister? What do you mean? Some guy, what do you call it, uh, on uh, Facebook, down on there and said, yeah, this ain't, this is just a comedy show or something. You know, but the Bible, you know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh -oh. It says it's the time to laugh. Yeah. You got read that? That's Ecclesiastes 3 4. It says it's the time to laugh. But if you read down in Ecclesiastes 3 7, it's a time to shut your mouth. You see that? It's a time to be quiet. You got to be quiet sometimes. It says that you can't stop being successful. Just because you're trying to win somebody over, you can't stop being successful because of that. You gotta do whatever you gotta do. You know, people gonna treat you funny no matter where you go. They're they gonna treat you wrong. Let me tell you about the dentist. I went to the dentist. That's what you were talking about. I went to the dentist maybe about three or four weeks ago. We went up there and I was talking to the lady. She was so happy to sit me in the seat. I got down and she laid back. Woo, she was happy. She was like, oh, yeah, it's so nice to have you here. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, oh, you said you're going out of town. Okay, and at Washington, D.C., that'd be great. You know, and I like people like you. you know? She was talking real nice to me. I mean, she went on and on and on real nice. Got the thing on and was beginning to work on me. And then oh, some people came in there. Oh, it was a mix-up what it was. But what, what, the people came in there and said, uh, Oh, uh, wait, well, um, he, he doesn't have insurance. <laughs> Ooh, hey. hey, she changed real quick. She looked at me. She said, in other words, you better get up out this chair right now. Get up out of here. You ain't got no insurance. What it was, we had the, uh, what do you call that, uh, the anthem. Blue Cross and Blue Shield. They in the news now. But I, I gave them that card, but it was supposed to be the Delta uh, insurance car. I was supposed to show them that. And they said, that didn't fall through to the 11th of January. It don't, don't come through. But I, we was fully covered. Anyway, by the way, and, and when I went back there, she was real nice again. She was so happy. But you know, it just shows you that people are changing. It was a song a long time ago. It said, there's a thin line between love and hate. It's a thin line. You know, sometimes there's a thin line between success and being unsuccessful. Some people would rather be retiring on Section 8 of Christianity. Some people would like to be on the welfare system of Christianity. But there are ways you can go further if you just change the way you think. The Bible says... Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to renew your mind. That's how it works. But a lot of times, we just don't want to renew our mind. We'd rather just settle for less. You know, but you know what? God is no respecter of person. You will learn that. 
I thought that, I, you know, I, we